welcome to episode 0 of Vintage Views. Today we're going to take a look at Lotus 2, or Lotus Esprit Turbo Challenge 2 to give it its full name. Released in 1992 by Gremlin Graphics, first on the Amiga, then ported to several other formats including the ST and the Mega Drive with varying degrees of success. So let's take a look at the game. Lotus 2, simply put, is a driving game, no more, no less. Its options are limited, you can pick keyboard or joystick control, manual automatic box, but that's about it. However, you can play two player split screen, or up to four players via an L modem cable. For those of you not familiar with an L modem cable, this allowed two Amigas to be connected together via cable that linked into both serial ports. This was useful in the days before internet gaming when multiplayer options were very limited. However, if you fancied playing 4 player, you would need to link your Amiga to your mate's machine which involved you lugging your Amiga and TV round to his and you both needed to have copies of the game. Let's take a look at the gameplay now, shall we? As you would imagine, you can only drive the Lotus in the game, as the name suggests. One player mode is a time trial. All you have to do is reach the next tech checkpoint before the time runs down. There are other cars on the road, but more for window dressing rather than for show. The superb intro music, however, is not replicated throughout the game, where the only sound you hear are the car. This is a serious flaw. However, it can be overcome. As with many driving games of the era, it's simply a matter of hammering the accelerator button and steering. Braking is not required at all. In fact, the only reason I ever broke in the game was to see if the little lights came on at the back, which they do. If by some miracle you cannot complete this game, there is of course the famous Turpentine code, where you enter Turpentine as a password and the timer just freezes, so you can drive the whole game at your leisure. This can make for some boring gameplay, but however, makes it easier for some people to play. This game suffers from what I like to call middle child syndrome. It's not as new and different as its bigger brother Lotus, and it's lacking the features that its younger brother has, such as the in-game CD soundtrack and the race track creator, both of which are brilliant features in the third game. Is this the best driving game of all time? No. Is it the best driving game on the Amiga? No. Is it even the best Lotus game? No. It is, however, a fun little one-disc wonder that's good for a short blast every now and then with a really, really good intro soundtrack. If you are looking for a good Amiga driving game, Check out Lotus 3 or Jaguar XT220. This one's really only for the completers to have to play all three. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm away to listen to the great soundtrack again and pretend like it's 1992 again. I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.